Today on Rappler. Ang Project Noa po ang magsisilbing arko ng mga Pilipinong laban sa dilubyo. Tutultukan na natin ang nakasanayang pagtitiis tuwing tagulan. Hindi na pwede ang bahala na. Sawa na tayo sa kaba. President Aquino leads the launch of Project Noa, a high-tech risk reduction system to prevent a repeat of Typhoon Ondoy. Nominees for the post of Chief Justice are down to 22. And a Taiwanese diplomat to the U.S. gets a two-year suspension for abusing her Filipina mate. Hello, I'm Ayi Makaraig, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. President Aquino leads the launch of government's disaster risk reduction project called NOAA in flood-prone Marikina City. With real-time information and advanced technology, Aquino believes Filipinos will no longer leave their lives to chance. This marker shows the height of the floods in Barangay Nangka, Marikina during Tropical Storm Ondoy in 2009. Dozens died as the disaster caught everyone by surprise. Three years later, the community aims to be better prepared with the help of the Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards, or NOAA. NOAA is a project of the Department of Science and Technology in partnership with the academe and the private sector. At NOAA's launch in Marikina Friday, President Aquino says the project is not just a website, but a comprehensive program to change Filipinos' mindset on disasters. Hindi po ba't karaniwan na kung ating marinig kay Juan de la Cruz, ang mga linyang bahala na si Batman. Ang Project Noa po ang magsisilbing arko ng mga Pilipinong laban sa dilubyo. Tutuldukan na natin ang nakasanayang pagtitiis tuwing tagulan. Hindi na pwede ang bahala na. Sawa na tayo sa kaba. The NOAA website is a one-stop shop for information ranging from rainfall and temperature to flood maps. Data come from water level monitoring sensors, automated rain gauges, and Doppler radars government is installing all over the Philippines. The OST Secretary Mario Montejo says the brains of Filipino scientists and engineers are behind the technology. It's having that uh, pride, but you know? self-worth na kaya naman talaga natin. Before lahat ng flood modeling, metering, foreign yung lahat, foreign develop. Ito, 100% local. NOAA proponents are building a flood monitoring and warning system starting with the Marikina River and in 17 other major river basins. This is the Marikina River. At the height of Tropical Storm Ondoy, waters quickly rose and rushed into this nearby school, reaching the second floor. Now with technology and a proactive community, teachers hope they will avoid a repeat of that tragedy. Guidance teacher Arwin Arnibal of Nangka High School no longer wants floods to destroy school facilities like what happened in Ondoy. He says residents on the ground must play their part. Dapat po talaga kasi hindi natin alam ang takbo ng panahon eh. Katulad na lang ngayon, kanina, maaraw, tapos ngayon, nagdidilim na naman. So talagang malaking pakinabang po yung itinuturong proyekto. Dapat maging handa. It now allows us to come up with a more cohesive warning system, uh, uh, measurements or at least uh, steps pagdating sa mga tao namin dito. It's, we're still, it's, it's still in its uh, infantile stage. I mean, make no bones about it, but... The challenge is how do you translate that information coming from the national government into a localized uh, uh, warning uh, uh, program. With the destruction from Ondoy and other disasters, the NOAA team hopes markers like this will not just be a reminder of the past, but serve as a lesson for the future. A weak southwest monsoon affects the western section of the Philippines, bringing scattered rain showers and thunderstorms. In its 5 p.m. update, State Weather Bureau Pagasa says a shallow low-pressure area was spotted 150 kilometers east of Surigao City. There is no cyclone in the Philippine area of responsibility. The rest of the country will have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers.
The Judicial and Bar Council releases the names of candidates for the post of Chief Justice. Of the initial 26 bets, 22 make it to the JBC's long list. Four were disqualified for various reasons. Of the 22 nominees, six are Supreme Court insiders, Acting Chief Justice Antonio Carpio, and Associate Justices Arturo Brion, Roberto Abad, Lourdes Sereno, Presbitero Velasco Jr., and Teresita Leonardo de Castro. Five nominees are government officials appointed by President Aquino, Justice Secretary Leila de Lima, Solicitor General Francis Hardeleza, Governance Commissions for GOCC's head Cesar Villanueva, Presidential Commission and Good Government Chairman Andres Bautista, and Securities and Exchange Commission head Teresita Erbosa. Outsider nominees in the list are Law Professor Soledad Cagampang de Castro, De La Salle School of Law Dean Jose Manuel Diocno, UP Law Professors Katrina Legarda and Rafael Morales, former UP Law Dean Raul Pangalangan, Cagayan de Oro Representative Rufus Rodriguez, Comelec Commissioner Rene Sarmiento, retired Judge Manuel Shanko Jr., University of the East Law Dean Amado Valdez, lawyer Vicente Velasquez, and ex San Juan Representative Ronaldo Zamora. The JBC, which vets nominees for the post before submitting a shortlist to the president, will hold public interviews on the candidates on July 24th to 26th. The president has until August 29th to appoint the replacement of dismissed Chief Justice Renato Corona. Now, speaking of shortlists, the Liberal Party comes out with a list of possible candidates for the 2013 senatorial elections. This after President Aquino's confirmation that his party is in coalition talks with the Nacionalista Party and the Nationalist People's Coalition. The list has 16 names and is not limited to members of LP, NP, and NPC. It includes four members of the Nacionalista Party, namely Cynthia Villar, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano, former Surigao del Norte Governor Ace Barbers, and NP ally Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. Only three in the list come from the LP. They are Customs Commissioner Rufi, Rufino Rufi Biazon, Quezon Representative Lorenzo Erin Tanyada III, and former Senator Ramon June Magsaysay. President Aquino's cousin, Bam Aquino, is also in the administration list. Other names in the list are re-electionist Senator Francis Cheese Escudero, Loren Legarda, and Aquilino Coco Pimentel III. LP stalwart Secretary Butch Abad says Escudero, who is very close to President Aquino, is definitely in. He adds they have discussed the inclusion of Senator Legarda in the ticket with the NPC. Senator Pimentel recently bolted the United Nationalist Alliance, or UNA, after protesting the inclusion of resigned Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri. Other administration candidates are Aurora Representative Sonny Angara of LDP, TESTA Director General Joel Villanueva, former Akbayan Representative Risa Ontiveros Baraquel, MTRCB Chair Grace Polia Manzares, and former Senator Jambi Madrigal. Now, how about Cagayan Representative Juan Ponce Jack Enrile Jr.? Abad says the son of the Senate President cannot be included because he is already with UNA. Abad adds, reducing the number of bets will not be easy. He says survey ratings will be considered and cutting the number of candidates to 12. Asked what administration candidates will get from Malacanang, Abad answers, the President's endorsement. He adds, Quote, we're not making any promises, we're not using government money, we tell them you have to get support from friends. The Philippines and Germany lead the successful adoption of a resolution in the United Nations Human Rights Council for Human Trafficking Victims. Philippine representative to the UN, Ivan Garcia, says this resolution encourages states to recognize trafficked persons as specific as as rather victims with specific protection needs. Data show there are at least 2.4 million people who are victims of trafficking at any time. At least 66% of the trafficked victims are women and 16% are girls. A Taiwanese diplomat is suspended from her job for abusing two Filipina maids. Taiwan Civil Servant Disciplinary Committee suspends Foreign Ministry official Yu Shen Shen for, quote, severely damaging Taiwan's image. 
Liu was deported by the United States in February for abusing two Filipina maids working in her Missouri home. She was arrested in November after a maid sought help from a Filipino she met at a grocery store. She served time for a fraud charge after reaching a plea bargain deal with U.S. prosecutors. Liu denies the allegations. No cash for cab? Swipe it! Davao City rolls out tabs that accept ATM or credit cards as payment. A post on Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte's Facebook fan page went viral after it announced the innovation. The post says select Black Maboy taxis, which will accept payment from passengers using ATMs and credit cards, are connected to Megalink and Banknet. Maboy Taxi says the black cabs will have the same rate as regular cabs. Queen Sophie of Spain concludes a five-day official trip to the Philippines where she visits aid development projects. The Queen says she wants more Filipino students to learn Spanish. Carlos Santa Maria reports. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Majesty the Queen of Spain. Spain colonized the Philippines for over 300 years. But all that is in the past, and Spain now wants to boost its ties with its former colony, named after a Spanish king. Spain's Queen Sofia calls the Philippines a sister country. The people of Spain see the Philippines not only as a sister country with whom we share many historical, social, and cultural links because of our common past, but also as a key partner in Asia to whose development we are fully committed. Since 2006, Spain contributed over 6 billion pesos to development projects in the Philippines, the priority country for Spanish aid in Asia. Of all European nations, Spain is also the highest donor to the country. The Philippines has been and will always be a priority country for the Spanish Cooperation for Development. We will also stand by the Filipino people to overcome the frequent national disasters that the country suffers, just like the case of Typhoon Sendong last December. Queen Sofia spent all week touring Spanish-funded development projects in Manila, Albay, and even Zamboanga, where the local language is Chabacano, reminiscent of Old Spanish. She is promoting a program that will teach Spanish in public schools. I wish to emphasize the support we give to the educational sector and particularly the efforts of the Department of Education for the successfully making into reality reintroduction, the reintroduction of Spanish language in the public edu educational system, not only because it is the past, uh, the past uh, of the cultural heritage of Philippines, but also because it opens up opportunities to secure the well-being of future generations of Filipinos in a globalized world. Sophia also wants more Spanish companies to invest in the Philippines, which Spain views as the ideal gateway into Asian markets, and look into President Benigno Aquino's public-private partnership program. Carlos Santa Maria, Rappler, Manila. International Monetary Fund Chief Christine Lagarde warns of a slowing global economy despite an upgraded assessment earlier this year. In April, the IMF hiked its global growth forecast to an annual rate of 3.5% this year. Better financial conditions and easing fears about the Eurozone crisis prompted the April assessment. But since the last forecast, Lagarde says the outlook became more worrisome. The IMF says the global economy is slowly improving, but it remains fragile. In contrast, Bank of America Merrill Lynch says the Philippine peso is set to outperform other currencies in Southeast Asia this year. The chief investment strategist of Merrill Lynch Asia Pacific says the peso will resist against the U.S. dollar, unlike currencies of other ASEAN countries that have high foreign ownership in their bond market. The Merrill Lynch official forecasts the peso to hover around 52 per dollar this year, compared with 53.3 in 2011. Now let's look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 1, the UN Human Rights Council passes its first resolution on internet freedom. Despite opposition from nations including China, Russia, and India, 85 co-sponsors support the resolution, which calls for all states to respect individuals' rights online as much as offline. At number 5, Two former Argentine dictators received heavy prison sentences for overseeing the systematic kidnapping of babies from leftist activists, 
killed during the 1976 to 1983 dictatorship. 86-year-old Jorge Videla was sentenced to 50 years in prison, and 84-year-old Re Reynaldo Bignone was given a 15-year jail term. Hundreds of people, relatives of the victims, children reunited with their families, and activists cheered this ruling. Several other former military officers received sentences of up to 40 years for their roles in a systematic plan to kidnap the babies of activists. Now at number 7, the World Health Organization alerts the Philippines and neighboring countries about an unknown respiratory disease that killed 61 children in Cambodia. The WHO says the disease has, quote, neurological symptoms. The Cambodian health minister says they are, quote, currently investigating the cases, but definite identification of the cause and source may take some time. And at number 9, the Syrian conflict extends to social media. Media reports say supporters of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad hacked the Twitter account of Al Jazeera's English language social media show The Stream. The program's Twitter account featured links to pro-Assad material. The Stream's producer confirms the account was hacked. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Now, Mega Upload founder Kim.com, formerly Kim Schmitz, takes his coat freedom fight to Twitter as he waits to find out if the United States can extradite him from New Zealand to face online piracy charges. Dotcom now has over 58,000 followers in less, in less than three weeks since he began tweeting on June 19. U.S. authorities allege mega upload and related file sharing websites netted more than $175 million in criminal proceeds and cost copyright owners more than $500 million by offering pirated copies of movies, TV shows, and other content. Dotcom denies any wrongdoing in a case U.S. prosecutors describe as the world's largest copyright action. Dotcom is currently free on bail. Schmitz legally changed his last name to .com. Rappler citizen journalism arm MOVE finishes its fourth installment today in Naga, where we host MOVE Beagle. Students from all over the region gather to discuss the power situation and how social media can be harnessed to improve or cope with the crisis. The event is called May Power Kaba. Natasha Gutierrez tells us more. It has been an incredible day here at Ateneo de Naga University, where Rappler is hosting its fourth chat series, Move Bicol. We've been to Baguio, Davao, and Manila, and now we're here to reach out to students in Naga and nearby provinces. Earlier in the morning, several speakers from the uh, from the energy industry rather talked about the power situation in this area. Power outages are common around here, and little has been done by the residents, those most affected about the situation, about it. Also in the afternoon, the Rappler team, including CEO Maria Ressa, talked about the internet and social media and how it can be used to tell stories, instigate change, and spread an advocacy. Now, currently ongoing, is the workshop portion of the event where students are being pushed and challenged to think outside the box to use social media for social change. With me is student leader Rafi Magno, who is, who is here to talk about his experience. Rafi, how has your day been? Yes, it's very empowering to see um, fellow youth leaders uh, engaging themselves with different issues being faced by BCOL, uh, forwarding their own causes and trying to make a difference in their own little way uh, through the use of social media. Students have been eager and excited all day here to learn, and it has been an overwhelming. There has been an overwhelming response to the presentations. In fact, hashtag Move Beacon has been a top trending topic on the Philippines Twitter site all day, which actually highlights the precise message of this event: how powerful the internet and social media are in starting, spreading, and elevating conversation. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Naga City. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, July 6, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Ayi Makaraig, and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.